By the power vested in me as Chancellor, I hereby constitute this assembly as a legal congregation of the University of Pretoria. During this assembly, degrees and diplomas with all associated rights and privileges will be conferred and awarded to the candidates whose names appear in the program. We request all of you to join us in silent prayer or meditation to give thanks for the achievements of our students. Thank you. As Chancellor of the University of Pretoria, I extend a hearty welcome to you at this virtual graduation ceremony. I would like to welcome our Chancellor's Medal recipients, Professor Gareth Bath and Professor Seybrand van der Berg, the Dean and the Deputy Dean of the Faculty, along with all persons to whom degrees and diplomas will be conferred and awarded. We also welcome families, friends and spouses to this virtual graduation ceremony. A warm welcome to all who are joining the ceremony today and a special welcome to our esteemed graduates who have achieved this milestone during this incredibly challenging time that our country, continent and the world is facing. It is an honor to be part of this ceremony, a month of autumn graduations where 11,424 Qualifications will be conferred in absentia between the 13th April and the 7th May. Today, as we celebrate your success, I would like to congratulate you on your hard work, tenacity and resilience through this COVID-19 time. It has taught us how to be tech savvy, how to adapt to unforeseen challenges and how to honor and cherish life as so many of us have lost loved ones during the pandemic. The thing about life is that no matter what we are facing, be it joy, hardship, sorrow, success, triumph or disaster, life goes on. The determining factor is how we choose to walk this path. Nelson Mandela's long walk to freedom refers as much to his personal and political walk as it does to the long walk that we must all take in life to achieve freedom, freedom to be ourselves, freedom to express ourselves, and freedom to achieve our highest goals. The walk is one of lifelong personal development, and it is also a physical walk if we're able. Many of you and no strangers to physically walking long distances. And while it can be associated with hardship, it is also healthy to physically walk. Our Vice Chancellor is a good example. He walks to contemplate his concerns, dilemmas, and thoughts. Karke Hart, a Danish philosopher, wrote about this. He said, do not lose your desire to walk. Every day, I walk myself into a state of well-being. I have walked myself into my best thoughts, and I know of no thoughts so burdensome that one cannot walk away from. I share this with you because it is our ability to walk, the walk of triumph over hardship and crisis, that determines our capacity for happiness, caring, and success. Right now, we are facing many crises. The COVID-19 pandemic is not only a disease crisis, it is a crisis of society, of the economy, of sustainability and well-being, and of governance, of the continent and globally. It is a big wake-up call to think and do differently, with our universities playing an essential role in co-creating the future we want. The future is wide open for all of you graduating today to contribute to changing our society and our communities for the better. You need to be the transformation you desire and to relentlessly apply yourselves to contribute to achieving a better world. 
as defined by the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. This is your calling. Speaking at another occasion, the Vice Chancellor made the following comments on Sustainable Development Goals. Our success depends on the world that is thriving, where human dignity and justice are paramount, where all people are able to reach their full potential while nobody is left behind, and where our development does not happen at the expense of our planet. We recognize the critical role that our university and graduates must play in securing the future of our country and continent. All 10 of the world's countries with the youngest populations are in Africa, with approximately 65% of the continent's citizens being below the age of 35. Access to quality higher education is a fundamental building block, not only for economic growth, but for reimagining a future we can all believe. The capacity to participate in this is creative and exciting. It includes examining ourselves, our organizational structures and cultures to ensure that they are relevant, future fit and enablers of agility, innovation and responsiveness. All of this needs to be done by leveraging technology, transdisciplinarity and collaboration. In May, we will be hosting Africa's first Nobel Prize Dialogue, bringing together Nobel laureates, opinion leaders, policymakers, students, researchers, and the public to engage in conversations of the future of work. Digital skills and capabilities are a must-have for all students and graduates. In 2019, the University of Pretoria invested 100 million rands into the digitalization of our system as we recognize the necessity of this for our students. At the same time, we are keenly aware that COVID-19 has amplified the structural inequalities in our country's education system. The National Ministry of Higher Education estimated that only about 20% of learners were reached through the various online platforms utilized during lockdown. To achieve access for all, we must advance the use of technology in all our schools and hold government accountable on its commitment to all learners and students. Since 2013, Cabinet has been pledging to deliver free broadband access to 90% of South Africa by 2020 and 100% by 2030. Further to the discussion about the future of work, it deeply pleases me to see how committed UP is to you. Our graduates being eminently employable or self-employable. The university fosters an entrepreneurial spirit among our students through the online entrepreneurship programs, business incubators, and small business development portals. It assists in growing innovation and entrepreneurship through the tax innovation ecosystem. This system provides specialized support to entrepreneurs throughout their startup growth journey, and it connects science and technology innovators with big companies, academics, and government. We hope that you make good use of this. UB is further committed to ensuring that you, our graduates, are at the forefront of the fourth industrial revolution, hence the extensive transdisciplinary curriculum in four IR fields, including big data science, data analytics, and artificial intelligence, offered through a range of departments and schools. The university recently launched Engineering 4.0 about all things digital in the transport and mobility space and is training students in how smart cities and smart transport will work. It is also pursuing research on the ethics of AI and the student counseling unit has just activated a first of its kind counseling chatbot called Scooby, whom we hope some of you have conducted because Scooby uses artificial intelligence to develop and grow 
the more it is used, the more responsive it becomes. Augmented and virtual reality laboratories and knowledge creation environments are sprouting up worldwide and being very effectively used. Our Department of Mining Engineering has the Kumba Virtual Reality Center for Mining, the only one in Africa, where our students are able to virtually experience being in a mine underground. It needs to be added that minerals and mining engineering at UP have just been ranked in the top 50 places in the world to study these subjects in the latest U.S. World University rankings. In the same rankings, theology, religion, and divinity in our faculty of theology and religion were ranked in the top 100, and their citations were ranked among the top worldwide, ahead of some of the most prestigious universities in Europe. Why? Because as the dean of the faculty of theology and religion, Professor Jerry Pillay explains, UP's focus is on relevant, contextual, transformative research to provide new knowledge that inspires people to reconsider what we think and do in our everyday lives and encourages positive change. He adds that justice and peace are two of the big issues globally and there is a revival of introspection in terms of what is happening in the world. There is a reawakening to the realities of life. It is not an easy time, but it is a fascinating time for you to be pursuing the next step of your career. Fortunately, you do so with the strongest possible higher education to your name. I am pleasantly struck by the excellence of our graduates and the quality of our academic staff. At UP, 68.1% of our academic staff have doctorates, the largest number in South Africa. This is increasing year on year. The qualification levels of, of academic staff have a direct impact on the capacity for research, supervision and productivity, with an increase of approximately 70 doctoral graduates each year. A further measure of quality is the number of researchers who have achieved a National Research Foundation rating. We have 564 NRF-rated researchers, 16 of which are A-rated. And so wherever you find yourself over in the next few years, and whichever career you pursue, you can do so with utmost confidence that you are a graduate of the University of Pretoria. As I confer these qualifications on you today, I once again convey my heartfelt congratulations. I encourage you to go forth boldly into the world and to continue to ask questions, remain curious, seek solutions and solve problems. Hold on tight to your idealism and your hope for a better future. Promote your university and support it in the best way you can as a donor, mentor to fellow students, and an advocate of what you have learned. We are proud to have you as part of the UP alumni family. We wish you the very best, and we look forward to seeing you progress. I congratulate you again, and I thank you. I now request the Dean to introduce to me the candidate for the Chancellor's Medal. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce to you Professor Gareth Barth for the Chancellor's Medal Award. Professor Gareth Barth has made outstanding and consistent contributions to the science and practice of veterinary medicine, not only in his specialist field of small stock health and production, but also in the development of the veterinary profession and the field of animal welfare. As Professor of Small Ruminant Health at the Faculty of Veterinary Science for many years, he trained not only future veterinarians, but also agricultural students, colleagues in practice and industry, as well as commercial and emerging farmers. Professor Barth edited and co-authored the first South African book on sheep and goat diseases for farmers, and is a co-developer of the internationally acclaimed Pharmature system of identifying animals for selective treatment adding to it the five-point check 
and Big Five Methods for Sustainable Parasite Control. Nationally, he has acted as consultant and advisor to the South African Wool Board, the National Wool Growers Association, the Red Meat Producers Organization, and the Red Meat Research and Development Trust, advising on policies and the allocation of research funding. As convener of the Small Stock Health Advisory Body, he established livestock industry support for the rational, defensible control of ovine paratuberculosis and designed the first vendor declaration system to help farmers assess the risk of buying sheep. Internationally, Professor Bart advised on the establishment of the International Sheep Veterinary Association, wrote his constitution and served as its first president. He was elected South African Veterinary Association councillor and then regional representative for East, Central and Southern Africa by the Commonwealth Veterinary Association and is the only African founder member of the Specialist European College of Small Ruminant Health Management. He has led programs for the European Union, Food and Agricultural Organization, Wellcome Trust and IFAD, participated in training in several countries and is an international member of the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control. Prof. Barth has made consistent contributions to his profession through the South African Veterinary Association over the years on many committees as well as SAVA president and organized or led four national and four international veterinary congresses. As chairman of the Livestock Welfare Coordinating Committee, an industry-supported NGO, he keeps South Africa in the forefront of livestock welfare matters. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to award the Chancellor's Medal to the candidate. I hereby award the Chancellor's Medal to Professor Gareth Bath. I have the honor of requesting Professor Gareth Bath to deliver his address. In accepting the Chancellor's Medal, with much gratitude for the great honour bestowed upon me today by the University of Pretoria, I'm very aware of and thankful for the support given to me over the years by many people and organisations. These include my family, my colleagues, numerous associations and animal organisations, as well as my employers, and in particular, the Faculty of Veterinary Science, which has provided me with opportunities to also make contributions outside the purely academic sphere. Looking back now over the five decades since I graduated, what have I learned? Today, we celebrate the achievements of hard-won degrees conferred upon our graduates and as we celebrate, we should keep in mind that this is an important milestone reached, but it is not a final destination. These degrees are vital preparation that enable us to make future contributions to the profession, related disciplines and to society. It is what we do with our qualifications after today that counts most. It is also important to realise, to accept and to embrace the fact that the process of imagining, learning and improving knowledge never ends and that keeping up to date through postgraduate education and involvement is essential and rewarding because if we're not going forward with others, we are falling behind. We should always strive towards the creation of new knowledge, since knowledge is like fresh fish. It does not keep very well. There are so many fields of interest that await us, including private practice, a specialization, civil service, an animal industry, welfare, statutory organizations, teaching or research and at national or international level. But whatever we choose, we should give it our best efforts and work towards making important contributions in our chosen fields and careers. It's become clear to me over the years that by working together with others, we can achieve so much more than on our own. And contrary to current tendencies, 
we should strive for consensus and not resort to conflict. Although enlightened self-interest and looking after ourselves is important, it is by giving service to others and to the animals in our care that we can achieve our greatest satisfaction. Now the future is often predict unpredictable and at best uncertain. So we should expect the unexpected and be prepared to seize the opportunities that may arise. Some may regard change as a threat to be avoided, but it is in fact an endless opportunity for exploration, action and improvement. This may mean that we are called upon to take leadership roles and sometimes to make unpopular decisions. But as long as we promote and defend the right principles and do not simply seek short-term approval, we will have the assurance that we have followed the right path. A challenging and exciting and rewarding future awaits our graduates. I wish you well on your journey ahead and I envy you the opportunities that await you. Thank you, Professor Gareth Bath, for your address. I now request the Dean to introduce to me the candidate for the Chancellor's Medal. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce to you Professor Sebrand van der Berg for the Chancellor's Medal Award. Professor Sebrand Smith van der Berg qualified as a veterinarian in 1969. After spending a few years as a private practitioner in South Africa and Zimbabwe, he joined the Faculty of Veterinary Science in 1976. He received specialist degrees in both large animal surgery in 1983 and radiology in 1985, and continued to complete a doctor in veterinary science degree in 1996, which described the etiology of lamina interna eversion and prolapse in the Brahman. These findings are included in the Breeders' Guide of Excellence. During his tenure at the faculty, he embodied large animal surgery and was part of establishing the Equine Clinic as a center of excellence. He was appointed as the first A. Bailey Chair in Equine Surgery. In 1987, he was appointed Head of the Dent Department of Surgery and was part of the Academic Hospital Building Committee. Prof. van der Berg has played a central role in the veterinary profession, having served on various committees and councils. He served as member of the Federal Council of South African Veterinary Association from 1985 to 1989 and was chairman of the Investigation Committee of the South African Veterinary Council from 1991 to 2003 and chairman of the Code of Conduct Committee. He served on the Inspection Committee from 2004 to 2006 and reviewed the guidelines for veterinary facilities. He was elected Vice President of the South African Veterinary Council in 2001 and became President in 2004. He was chairperson of the Equine Practitioners Group of South Africa, as well as a founding member of the South African Farriers Association. He was the first recipient of the Spirit of the South African Equine Veterinary Association Award. Today, he is an honorary member of both these associations. He is a patron of the South African Farriers Association and a member of the American Association of Equine Practitioners. After his retirement from the faculty, he remained involved as an extraordinary professor and continued playing a central role in the profession. He established the first training facility in South Africa, training animal physiotherapists, and served as principal of the Equine Librium College from 2012 to 2018. He is a truly remarkable man with the reputation of gentle giant in the South African veterinary profession. Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal, I request you to award the Chancellor's Medal to the candidate. I hereby award the Chancellor's Medal to Professor Seybran van der Berg. I have the honor of requesting Professor Seybran van der Berg to deliver his address. Chancellor, Professor Nkulu, Vice-Chancellor and Principal, Professor Kupe, Deputy Deans, all academic staff, guests, friends and graduates. To be honoured by your alma mater in this manner is sincerely appreciated. Since I was informed to restrict my presentation to five minutes, Please accept my apology and allow me to read rather what I pinned down. 
Professor Amelia Goddard of the Department of Companion Animal Clinical Studies and uh, the personnel where I spent almost 30 years of my academic life that nominated me. Professor Vinny Nadeur, Deputy Deans and his executive who supported the nomination and the University of Pretoria who accepted it. Thank you. To the University of Pretoria who made it possible for me to specialize and grow my professional life and the Equine Librium College where I can share my knowledge for the past 10 years in training animal physiotherapists and the opportunity to grow in a new direction. Very exciting. Thank you. I have two choices how to conduct my life. One is to live for myself. What is important is me and what is good for me is the only thing that counts. When I reach the zenith, self-actualization, I have arrived and demand respect and acknowledgement. If I continue in this vein, it may take some years before I wake up one day and realize that I have grown in circumference but not taller. A giant indeed, but alas, a giant dwarf. Or I may decide to use my opportunities and my talents to grow, share and serve. Share my knowledge with my fellow colleagues in my profession and use my talents to serve my community and apply it for the betterment of the society at large. Altruistic transcendence. And here is the wonderful thing. What I give away freely, knowledge, kindness, love and a sharing and caring attitude does not leave me poorer. The author of Ecclesiastes advises me to cast my bread upon the water, for in many days you will find it again, because someone upstream also has thrown bread in the water, and so we can all benefit downstream and grow into giant fruit-bearing trees. In the words of a former head of anatomy at Honest the Poor, Professor Marley Smits, and a good friend of mine, attitude, not aptitude, determines a person's altitude. But in this respect, there also lurks some danger. I may also grow into a giant, but unless tempered by a balanced life, I may become a crippled giant. Balance between my professional and work life my social and family life, and my spiritual life. It is a sad reality that my family and spiritual life is often sacrificed on the altar of progress in my professional life. In my professional life, I must express my appreciation towards my fellow lecturers and superiors that trained me, and my colleagues who supported me and believed that I made a positive contribution to our profession. My family, and in particular my wife, for the past 52 years, walks beside me, endures me, supports me, and is still my best friend. And most important, my God, who through His grace alone, He held me up. He raised me up when I was down and under, and enabled me to move forward. For our graduates, may I quote Dr. Chalmers. Live for something. Do good and leave behind you a monument of virtue that the storms of time can never destroy. Write your name in kindness, love and mercy on the hearts of the thousands you come in contact with each year. You will never be forgotten. No, your name, your deeds, will be as legible on the hearts you leave behind as the stars on the brow of evening. Good deeds will shine as the stars of heaven. If I leave you with the impression that I am so smart, perfect and faultless, the answer is negative. I am still in the panel beta shop of life and is and will remain a work in progress. In conclusion, Allow me to share with you the most important item on my bucket list. 
neem my lewe hier, laat dit u tot eer wees, meer en meer. Amen. Thank you, Professor Seibrand van der Berg, for your address. I hereby confer and award all degrees and diplomas in absentia with the associated rights and privileges to all candidates whose names appear in the graduation program. Doctor of Philosophy, Baninat Dogonyaro, Veterinary Tropical Diseases. Thesis, the prevalence and characterization of Leptospira SPP in slaughter animals at abattoirs in Gauteng, South Africa, and the zoonotic risk posed to abattoir workers. Supervisor, Professor A. A. Adesiun. Co-supervisor, Professor H. Van Yerden. External co-supervisor, Dr. A. D. Potts. Timothy Dreyer. Paraclinical Sciences. Thesis. Effect of recombinant mouse sclerostin proteins on bone formation in vitro and in a murine model of sclerosteosis. Supervisor, Professor V. Naidu. Co-supervisor, Professor L.J. McGaw. Kripasha Govindasamy. Production Animal Studies. Thesis. A One Health Systems Approach to the Epidemiology, Management and Regulatory Control of Bovine Brucellosis at the Human Cattle Farm Interface in Gauteng, South Africa. Supervisor, Professor P. N. Thompson. Co-Supervisor, Professor E. M. C. Etter. Solomon Joaro, Veterinary Tropical Diseases. Thesis. Evaluation of veterinary non-living anthrax vaccine candidates in cattle. Supervisor, Professor H. Van Yerden. Co-supervisor, Dr. W. Bayer. External co-supervisor, Dr. O. C. Dumnego. Katya Kupel. Production Animal Studies. Thesis. Spatial Temporal Analysis of Rabies in South Africa. The role of black-backed jackals and aspects of its control by oral rabies vaccination. Supervisor, Professor P. N. Thompson. Co-supervisor, Dr. O. R. van Skalkwijk. Rhoda Liesk. Production Animal Studies. Thesis. A meristematic approach to the design of small ruminant modules in veterinary education. Supervisor, Professor D. E. Holm. Co-supervisor, Professor L. van Reinfeld. William Shereni, Veterinary Tropical Diseases. Thesis, History of the Development, Use and Impact of Tete Control Measures in Zimbabwe. Supervisor, Professor L. C. B. G. D. Neves. External co-supervisor, Prof. G. A. Vale. External co-supervisor, Dr. G. Kechi. Master of Science, Tropical Animal Health. Theo Kotza. Samson Manata. Blessing Musa with Distinction. Chadzanzo Piri. Sean van den Herk. Veterinary Industrial Pharmacology. Mkabadeli Ngube. Courtney van der Merwe with Distinction. Veterinary Science, Anatomy and Physiology. Anal Nodia with Distinction. Veterinary Science Companion Animal Clinical Studies. Keegan Bosted with distinction. Andre Garrett with distinction. Cameron Pryor. Chandini Sijarim with distinction. Marissa Slubber. 
Christine Steirer with distinction. Veterinary Science Paraclinical Sciences Albert Devet with distinction. Veterinary Science Production Animal Studies Belinda Parrot with distinction. Peter Vermaak Tropical Diseases Samantha Mkandla with distinction. Sunday Ochai with distinction. Lisa Penzorn with distinction. Master of Veterinary Medicine Clinical Laboratory Diagnostics Kelly Dupria with distinction. Ophthalmology Kerry Lee Dobby Wildlife Diseases Augustina Fit Postgraduate Diploma Production Animals Susanna Kutzer State Veterinary Medicine Ngodi Kupa Christine Stradon with distinction Veterinary Clinical Sciences Stephanie Chatre Clarissa Gastro with distinction Thomas Avondale Marilee van Rooyen Veterinary General Gertrude Mintz Bachelor of Veterinary Science Laura Atkinson Jody Bailey Marianka Barnard Jana Basson Mzwanele Begayege Obadiah Bentley Rulof Berg Lindsay Biggs Lisna Bosch Peter Boetus Marinette Botma Nidia Brits Floria Bongiorno Odette Berger Matthew Bergerhoff Enelia Beis Rawdon Capel with distinction Simone Carrington Kuzo Chilwane Anneli Kutzer Rion Crawford Sinead Creswell Johannes Diechenaar Johan de Jong Janan de Walsum Annika de Witt Samantha de Dominique Bronwyn Drake Britt de Brea André Els Natalia Ferreira Kilag Foster Mazal Ferri Werner Gerke Megan Gibbs with distinction Celise Gomez Jessica Goodhead Nicolene Greilen Tienus Griesel Tiana Hansraj James Herzog Yuzan Holiday Sumeri Uchenbusem Heidi Horrell Kirsten Houston Snawo Jack Angelique Jacobs 
with distinction. Magdalena Janas Aninka Jordan Jordan Jeselovitz Ramoni Jobar Jinin Jigdawu Lee Kairas with distinction Elza Kolfer Kimal Krishnalal Anien Labaskachni Margot Laxton Asian Lee Stephanie Lee Shu with distinction Keegan Loder Elizabeth Lombard Marley Lawrence Koketo Makuedu Vinolia Makua Mariska Milan Shanae Manz Motewo Masia Bonginkosi Matebula Dimakato Mazetela Vicky McKee Anche Mena Luke Michelades Kenya Lee Miller Tyler Mitchison with distinction Sibongagonke Mgambi Olobucheng Mohafe Megan Moodley Teniel Moodley Mohammed Mula Verushka Naidu Venetia Naidu Vianka Naidu with distinction Ilani Nell with distinction Johannes Nell Rudolf Nell Sakumozi Nkosi Nangamso Nokwe Sarah Olivia Nunn Janine Werendal Eunice Olivano Bianca Wellefield Sarah Werdet Mark Ortman with distinction Jerich Ostman Orobind Barayachi Shannon Parker Daniel Parsons Calvin Payne Candice Pedrero Songezo Pepu Lenal Pile Ruvania Pile Megan Ragaval Zenobia Rasul Caitlin Riebau Pioshan Reddy Ruan Reinhardt Donovan Reynolds Alri Richter Natasha Rautache Nicola Sankey Tebucho Sianejo Tayelo Sibi Marley Smallberger Polina Schmidt Johannes Spammer Johan Stadler Noel Stein with distinction 
Natasha Stoltz Savannah Stutchberry Karen Stiles Constance Swanepoel Hermanus Swart Graham Taylor Charles Rue Terblanche Cherise Tron Yaku Tron Tamron Thomas Mutlotleng Tzilapedi Susanna Ice Amina Vahed Benjamin van Aas Magdri van Aaswegen Philippus van Aaswegen Marisa van den Berg Hendrik van Seil Joannette van Seil with distinction Luis Velasco Ramirez Zilia Marie Ferster Jacobus Weideman Jessica West Alfred Woodley with distinction Matthew Woods Shante Voicy Jonathan Wright University Diploma in Veterinary Nursing Anne Kutzer Zanowole Lazla Elisma Dutoy Dionai Jubar Mbongeni Kabinde Dinewo Maila Komozo Malabane Raisibe Matapo Dinte Mateka Zamogule Msibi. I will now introduce to you the recipient of the Vice Chancellor and Principals Award. The following candidate distinguished herself during 2020 as the overall top achiever in her faculty. Congratulations. Award of the Vice Chancellor and Principal, Lee Kairos. Achievement Awards Tyler Memorial Medal, Lee Kairos. Veterinary Nurses Association of South Africa Award, Duanai Joubert. Axum Services Prize, Zanawuhle Lala. DIAG Import and Export Prize, Raisibe Matapo. DIAG Prize, Zanawuhle Lala. Elenco Animal Health Prize, Humuzo Malapaane. Hills Prize, Homozo Malapane South African Pork Producers Organization Prize Mark Ortman South African Veterinary Council Prize Elisma Dutoy South African Veterinary Association Prize This prize is shared Rawdon Capel Yonan de Valzum, Megan Gibbs, Angelique Jacobs, Lee Kairos, Stephanie Lee Shu, Tyler Mitchison, Vianca Naidu, Mark Ortman, Alfred Woodley. Zutus South Africa Prize, Dionai Joubert. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let us give 
our graduates a big hand for their hard work and perseverance. I would like to thank the families, friends and spouses for supporting our graduates during their studies. We have now come to the end of the proceedings. Please join us in singing the national anthem. By the powers vested in me as Chancellor, I hereby dissolve this assembly of the University of Pretoria. Go to